Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Brennan back again with another video and today we are talking about the very first light that I ever learned how to use on film sets. This is a very simple, straightforward, basic kind of a light, but it's also a very high output light. So it's really cool to, uh, to get to learn on a light like this. When you're getting started and learning filmmaking, I think it's really good to start using high output lights and um, to get used to that kind of a workflow and get used to um, managing um, that amount of electricity in your circuits and how to safely do that. And it also allows you the ability to very early on start doing um, larger scale sets, you know, larger interior spaces. Um, you can do with high output lights, you can do a lot more with um, exterior scenes, whether it be a daytime exterior or a nighttime exterior. So getting to learn high output lights, even if you're just starting out learning about filmmaking, um, I think it's a really use useful thing. And lights like the light I'm about to talk about are a very cheap way to get introduced into using high output lights. So the light that I'm talking about today is the Lowell DP 1000 watt tungsten open-faced floodlight. That's what you see right here. It has a tungsten filament inside, so it's a sort of warm orange kind of a light. As you can see right now, I'm using one of these lights as the key light on me right now on camera left. So you can tell the color of the light just by the fact that my face is very warm, the inside of my room is very warm, but if you look at the daylight coming from the windows, um, which is daylight color light, which is probably because it's not a very cloudy day out, it's probably close to 10,000 Kelvin outside. So you can see that the lights coming from the windows are a lot more blue versus the orange light that's inside. So it's a very uh, warm orange kind of a light and uh, it's very, very high output. So this bulb is a thousand watts, like I said, and there's not much to this light. It's basically, um, you have your switch here that's on the cable. Some of them, the cable is actually attached to the light. Some of them, you can actually remove the cable from the back. Just depends on the model that you get. Um, it has a spot and a flood knob right here that basically, if you look inside at the bulb, it moves the bulb forward or back to just adjust the width of the beam a little bit. So if you need a wider beam, you can flood it out a little bit. If you need a little bit more of a spottier beam, you can draw that beam back a little bit. It has basic barn, barn doors that fold. Um, it's all metal construction, so this thing is built like a tank. It will hold up and it'll take a lot of abuse. Um, you could get used lights on eBay that could be old and could be badly taken care of, but they'll still function perfectly because there's not a lot to them. They're not really as finicky as say like, you know, some modern LED lights where they might break a little bit easier. This kind of light, if you drop it, the bulb might break, but you can replace the bulb. Um, they're only about $15 to replace the, the lamp itself inside and the actual unit itself you can get for as low as a hundred bucks on eBay if you shop around. Um, the lights get very hot because they're tungsten so it has a rubber grip or rubber handle on the side that you can hold and manipulate it from but I always recommend if you're using lights like this to have um, leather gloves on you at all times so leather gloves like this you can get these kind of gloves from uh, Film Tools Online. Um, just simple leather gloves that will keep you from burning your hands. These things get super hot. That's, it's no joke, and it's, uh, it's a safety hazard. So um, if whenever you're manipulating lights like this, you want to make sure you have leather gloves in your set kit. Technically, you can hold it from this without any leather gloves, but if you touch any other part of this, it's all metal. Um, basically, all of this is just a heat sink, and it, if you touch any of it, you'll burn your hands. So. Wear some leather gloves when you operate this thing. Um, it just has a simple baby pin uh, screw mount on the bottom that you can attach to a light stand. And in front of the lamp is a steel mesh just to protect you from the bulb itself. It gets very hot, um, but I recommend leaving it on there while you're operating. Even though this mesh does create sort of an unpleasant hatch mark pattern in the beam, um, which is why you never want to really use an open face light like this as a direct source without modifying it in some way, whether you're diffusing it or bouncing it off something. If you're using it as a key light, uh, for one, it's a very small point source, so it's gonna be super, super harsh shadows, which is unpleasant. And uh, for two, it's gonna have that very subtle sort of hatch mark pattern because of that mesh, which will be 
pretty evident, it'll be pretty noticeable. So you don't really want to use this light as just like pointing it right at your subject or pointing it right at your background without modifying it in some way, diffusing it or bouncing it or something along those lines. However, what this light is really great for is creating really, really bright, really punchy rim lights and you don't need to modify the light in any way if you don't want to to shine it and just create a little bit of an edge light on the edge of your subject. And because it has such a wide beam and because it's so powerful, you can put it very far away and you can create a rim light on a very, very large space. Another tiny little feature that's on this light is a little clamp that's right here that you can screw to loosen it and then tighten it down. And that little clamp is used to hold uh, an umbrella. So you can put an umbrella right out in the front of this light to diffuse it. Or you can also uh, mount a gel frame holder to this. For instance, if you wanted this light to be daylight balanced, you can put a CTB gel in front of it on the gel holder, just right here. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the entire light. Not much to it, it's pretty simple. Like I said, you can pick them up for about 100 bucks on eBay. Um, they're really durable, all metal construction. They're gonna last you a long time, built like a tank. And if you need to replace the bulbs, then they're only about 15 bucks. I recommend if you have one of these lights, pick up yourself a couple bulbs. So they are pretty fragile. So if one breaks, you're not screwed and you can replace it while you're on set. So always have two or three fresh bulbs on you uh, at all times. But other than that, it gives you a lot of punch and uh, it's, a, it's a great light to start out on if you uh, aren't familiar with using super high wattage lights like this. This is a really cool place to start, the Lowell DP light. Speaking of high wattage, to round off the video, I kind of wanted to just do a quick lesson on what light wattage is and how to calculate uh, proper electric current flow so you're not overloading your circuits, which if you do that, you could cause um, a fuse to break or you could cause a fuse to overheat and it could be a fire hazard, which is very dangerous. So if you're using lights like this in a professional environment, you wanna be safe and you wanna make sure that you're not overloading your circuits. So it's a very important thing to learn when you're using higher output, higher wattage units like this. So if you've taken basic algebra in school, this shouldn't be too difficult to wrap your head around. There's just a simple equation that you need to memorize and the equation is watts equals amps times volts. And you can switch the order of those things, obviously just like in algebra, so you could do um, watts divided by volts equals amps if you're trying to calculate for amps or whatever you're trying to do. Um, a basic household circuit, you can check the, the, the fuse box wherever that is in the building, but a basic household circuit will be uh, 120 volts and 20 amps. So um, if you do the calculation, 120 times 20 gets you 2,400. So you can have a max of 2,400 watts in a single circuit. Um, that happens to be a circuit with 120 volts and 20 amps. That's uh, a, a pretty common across the board. Um, you'll see um, 120 volts and 20 amps um, in the circuit in your fuse box. Like, like I said, just pop your fuse box open and check the numbers that are written inside the fuse box and that'll let you know. So this light um, is a thousand watt light. So that means potentially you could have two of these wired into one circuit, which would be a total of 2000 watts and that circuit could hold 2,400 watts. So you'd be able to safely plug those in simultaneously. If you had three of them plugged in, then you'd either break the fuse or um, you could cause a fire. So don't do that. But that's the simple equation, watts equals amps times volts. So make sure you learn that equation as you're using higher wattage units. Stay safe and enjoy shooting with these higher output tungsten units. So as a quick demo to give you a much better idea of how powerful these lights are, because I don't think it comes across in the shot where I actually had the DP light on, I turned the DP light off. Didn't change any of the exposures in camera. This is what this room looks like with that exposure without the light on. So that is how much output this kind of light has. It's going through two layers of diffusion I should also add. So that's taking a couple stops off the light. So um, actually on camera, I'll just lean over and I'll flick the switch here. Okay, I'm holding the switch, I'm gonna turn it on. And that's how bright this light is. Now I'll actually pop both the, diff the diffusions off and show you that. Whoo, goddamn, that is hot. Oh my gosh, that's hot. 
I, can, I cannot see. That's the same light, nothing changed except for I took all the diffusion off. As you can see, the quality of the light is way harsher. I'm sure there's all sorts of ugly, specular highlights in my sweaty skin because this is really hot. So I'm going to turn the light back off again. Ah, oh, better. <laughs> so there you have it. Very bright, high output light. So thanks for watching. Hope this video helped you guys out. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in my next one.